everyone and welcome back to my channel Melanade Beauty. In today's video I am going to be personalizing gifts for Christmas for my family using my Cricut machine. As you all may know I recently partnered with Cricut in my last video. If you haven't seen that please go check it out. Um, and I have just been obsessed with Cricut and just creating new DIYs and personalizing things so I just thought it'd be the perfect time to start personalizing Christmas gifts now early so I can get it out of the way and you know just take my time adding the perfect touch to some gifts so for an example I made these little cute tea towels with my brother-in-law's um, family name on it and I just think they came out really great I'm also going to be personalizing t-shirts and mugs so if you are interested in learning how to do that on a beginner friendly level keep on watching so for these projects I'm going to be using some random blanks that I recently found in some stores including the dollar store and just picking up items that I think would be great gifts to customize I'm going to be using the Cricut Explore 3 as well as Smart Materials, which are materials where you do not need a mat, but of course you can use whatever material you have. And for this first project, I'm going to be customizing a mug for my sister. Um, she's a sports mom, so she does a lot of football, softball practices and games. She's like the mascot all the time running up and down the field so i know she would love this um, design so i just put football mom softball mom t-ball mom and i added a football and baseball little image all of these images and text are going to be free by the way in this um, tutorial so once i've adjusted everything to size i go ahead and group and attach all of these together that way they can be cut as one and not separately. Here it shows that I'm choosing without a mat, but I actually went back and changed it to on a mat because I am going to be using a small scrap piece. Um, and here I'm choosing the Smart Vinyl Permanent as my material. Even when you have smart materials, you're still gonna need a mat if you have like a small piece that you want to use or else you'll ruin the whole entire sheet. And I've already learned from my mistakes with that, so. For these projects, I'm gonna be using the MacBook Pro as well as my iPhone for projects in design space. So you can see that it's very versatile and you could definitely create on any type of device you have. And there is my design. And now I personally like to remove the entire piece and then weed it. I don't know why, I just get kinda scared that the material is gonna to stick to my mat and I just, I don't know, but I think it's easier to weed on the mat. I've seen a lot of people do that, but this is fine as well. So I'm just weeding out little small details um, on the football and baseball, and then I'm gonna weed out the letters as well. Now I'm gonna be using the Cricut transfer tape to transfer my design. And I'm gonna be using the burnishing tool to burnish. That's a new word that I've recently learned. Um, and right here, I wanna keep the original label on. So I'm just gonna cut off that one piece that's kind of gonna be in the way of my design. And of course, I'm going to be using some alcohol to remove all of the stickiness or any, you know, fingerprints. That way we can have an easy and clean, long-lasting transfer. And I'm also going to be using a little mini Mod Podge bottle just to keep up the mug as I'm placing my design. And once it's on there, I'm going to burnish. And there you have a nice customized mug for your sports moms out there. This is so cute. Um, and I think she's really gonna like it. And I also created a second mug for my mom that just says mother like no other. And this one turned out really great as well. By the way, I found these very solid and heavy ceramic mugs from Dollar General for only $5 each. Mm -hmm. 
And for my next project, I'm going to be customizing a candle. I just removed the original labeling and I'm going to create just my own little cute Merry Christmas um, design on the front of the candle. So I'm in design space and this is a free Christmas tree image. And on top, I'm gonna write the Merry Christmas text. For this design, I'm gonna be layering for the first time. So I'm gonna have two different colors layered on top. And so to do that, I'm going to attach the Merry Christmas together as one, of course, because that's gonna be in our black vinyl. And then the Christmas tree is gonna be separate. So even though on the design space it's layered on top, they're really gonna be cut separately. And for the first cut, I'm going to be cutting out the Merry Christmas in some permanent vinyl. Now for our second cut is the Christmas tree. This is actually removable vinyl, but it's pretty sticky and I don't see it coming off on a candle. It's not gonna be washed or anything, so. Now that I've cut my designs, I'm going to start weeding them. The first layer is going to be the Christmas tree. And so I'm gonna be cutting out a matching size of transfer tape to the design. I'm gonna burnish it and then lace it in the center now for this design i just use the text merry christmas but of course you can create whatever text you want i was thinking of you know putting someone's name on here and like a funny quote but i'm not exactly sure who i'm gifting this candle to yet so i just thought creating a little custom christmas design was cute so here is the christmas text that i'm going to be placing right over top of the christmas tree And I actually use the same piece of transfer tape because it's still very sticky after one use. You can actually keep reusing the transfer tape over for a few more layers if you'd like. And I placed it on a slant. I just think that looks nice. And there you have a little Merry Christmas candle. And this scent is actually a sweet candy cane smell that I absolutely love. Next project, I am creating some custom tea towels for my brother and my sister-in-law. And here is the first towel design I'm creating. It's going to say the Lindsay's, which is their last name. And I'm using some little flower decal designs as a little extra touch on the side. Once again, these texts and images are all free in the design space. Um, so once I have that design, I connect and attach those together. And then for my second tea towel, I'm gonna add a little vase with flowers, which kind of matches the first one. So it's kind of a little matching theme. And then in the little jar space area, I just added the text family. So the tea towels kind of go hand in hand. Now this is an iron on design. So we're gonna make sure that we mirror the image in text so we can have a great transfer process. And of course I'm gonna be using the mat again because I have this huge piece of vinyl left over from previous projects and I just want to make sure it doesn't you know ruin so I'm gonna be using the mat although this is smart iron-on material and I will say this design was very intricate and had a lot of small tiny details in the sunflowers but I found out a little trick that you can use this little sticky roller to you know weed out any of the very tiny details um, it worked for a little bit, but then I still went in and I took some time weeding out the design. And also these very small uh, scissors helped as well to kind of lift up the little fraying pieces of vinyl. And here it is once I have completely weeded the design. I think it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to move on to the other piece, which is the Lindsay's part. This one was very easy to weed, of course. Mm -hmm. 
the sticky roller is also very helpful to clean up the little messes that you create when weeding as well. So here are my designs and I am going to be using some flower sack tea towels from the dollar store. So I believe they're made of cotton. So I'm gonna be using the proper temperature found on the Cricut website under the Cricut heat guide. If you wanna look that up, it'll have all of the proper temperatures for the material you're using. First, I'm going to warm up the material and also iron out any creases. And before I iron, I'm going to just add some parchment paper underneath because the material is very thin. So just for extra security. And then I'm going to iron for 30 seconds as prompted and press firmly on the design. And it just easily lifts away and it just looks so good. So I'm also gonna flip it and iron the back to secure it. And here is the first tea towel. I really, really love how this turned out. And for the second one, I'm gonna line it up with the first one just so I'm placing it in the right area. And I'm gonna do the same process and just make sure I'm placing it in the proper space of the tea towel when it's folded and place a parchment paper underneath. Iron for 30 seconds with firm pressure. And once that's done, it just easily pops off. This design, the sunflowers came out a little bit very silhouette and dark, which I really don't mind. It still looks really good. But once again, I'll keep the intricate designs in mind, but I think these turned out really great. Next project is a t-shirt for my nephew who likes, you know, Nike and Adidas brand, but I'm gonna be using the cheaper route and I'm gonna create this design in Canva. And this is just regular text. I found the check mark on Google with a transparent design, which is what you're gonna need. And when you save this design, you're gonna wanna save it as a transparent background as well. So if you're familiar with Canva, you should know, you know, how to, you know, create designs. But if you'd like a tutorial on how I, you know, really created this design specifically with Canva and a more step-by-step -step tutorial, just comment down below. So once you have that image, you're going to upload it to the design space and just size it up. It's already all connected because it's one image. But instead of it being a print and cut, which is a little bit more difficult, we're just gonna use it as a regular cut because it's all one layer and it's one color. And I'm gonna be using on a mat, I believe. I don't know if I used a mat. Oh, definitely turn the mirror on because this is another iron on transfer. You always want the mirror on for iron on transfer. So here it is, and now it's prompting me to load my material. And I did not use a mat because I'm just using a regular roll since this is a larger image. And here I am weeding, and this was just so satisfying. I love weeding like larger texts and images because the material just pops off and it's like very easy. And here it is once it's completely weeded it looks so good so now I'm going to place it on my shirt that has already been previously you know prepped and ironed and I'm just going to iron that on for the same temperature as before because this is a hundred percent cotton t-shirt And then I'm going to flip it over and repeat the process on the other side but I'm not gonna hold the iron on for too long just a couple seconds to fuse that vinyl to the shirt and here is the finished results And for this project, I'm gonna be creating another t-shirt, but this time I'm gonna be adding some layers, you know, a little bit of different, more detail and color. Um, I actually thought I had 
green vinyl iron on but I don't so this is gonna be a black and white design but it's gonna be on a green shirt so here I'm making another t-shirt for my other nephew who's obsessed with dinosaurs and I'm just gonna have this dinosaur skeleton head and his name at the bottom and then a little quote that says roar um, so he, this is really fun and cute for you know more younger siblings and um, and I also use the t-shirt template in the design space just to place my image and see where it's gonna what it's gonna look like on a t-shirt even though I'm using a long sleeve shirt so and to really see what this is gonna look like I'm gonna go to my shapes and add a square and just turn it to the color of the shirt I'm gonna be ironing on so that way I can really see what this is gonna look like and I think it looks pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and click make it but of course the designs can't all be welded together they have to be separate so my white materials which are the skeleton head and the caption are going to be printed together not printed cut together as one image and then the black material which is the name and the roar text are going to be on a separate cut on a separate vinyl Now Cricut Design has prompted me to move on to my next cut. I'm going to mirror the image as well and I'm going to be using some scrap vinyl on a mat. I did not measure this particular piece of vinyl so the name did not make the entire cut but that's going to be an easy fix. As you can see the M is not on the vinyl so to fix that I'm just going to cut and trim off another piece of spare vinyl that is going to fit the M. I went back into design space and I deleted everything from the design except the M. So you're going to want to detach, ungroup everything, delete everything and only save and make the M because it's going to be the exact size that you had it originally in the design. And here is the M on a separate piece which is going to be very easy to iron as one piece. So here I'm just weeding out all of my pieces including the name the text and the skeleton image as well so now that we have all of our pieces cut and weeded it is now time to transfer first we're going to be using the first layer which is our white layer of the skeleton head and the caption quote so I'm going to go ahead and use the easy press to iron this on with the same settings as before and by the way these shirts are from the Dollar Tree these are only a dollar shirt which is really great because you know who wants to pay more than a dollar for a regular shirt and now I'm gonna go ahead and place my second layer which is the black vinyl and I'm gonna be first placing the M so that way it won't shift anywhere when I place the rest of the name portion but just before before I add the rest of the name I want the M to kind of cool off before I peel it so I'm gonna move on to the roar text and just layer that right on top of the caption quote and I'm covering up the skeleton just to, you know make sure I don't you know mess up the design that's already ironed on there so here I am pressing the roar right onto the text and now I'm gonna move back to the name portion and just add the rest of the letters to the name off of camera I flipped the shirt and just added some heat pressure to the other side to secure my design and here are the results so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and a comment down below it would really help me out with the YouTube algorithm and if you want to see more videos like this one check out my previous Cricut video in the description box below and also subscribe so you won't miss any more of my upcoming videos I will be creating a lot more videos using the Cricut machine as well so stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time